Hello, uh, so this is going to be a short tutorial how to interact with the Beaver Whisper NFT <laughs> but I guess it will be more in general how to interact with smart contracts on the Ethereum network um, so yeah, so that's going to be kind of fun what are we going to use because this NFT lives on a test network called Rinkaby uh, you can just kind of get the Ether needed there uh, without paying anything, it's for free. Um, but the same principle would work like in the mainnet, like in the real Ethereum network, you would use your own, uh, you know, crypto wallet and you can send money to transactions and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so let's dive in. So, um, you know, here there's a blockchain section uh, where I kind of build the integration to this website. Uh, so let's look at that. It tells me here that I don't have a MetaMask plugin. MetaMask plugin is a plugin to a browser that lets you interact with uh, with the network. So we're gonna click this. Yes, download now. Yes, please. And add to from add extension. So that's just adding any other extension except this one has this cute fox here <laughs> um, yes so to like set up this extension you just do get started here and then you say create me a wallet basically like a new wallet and then you agree to everything and then some uh, phrase like it's think of it as a password that unlocks all the accounts you have with that plugin important thing here is that you shouldn't use these like i'm just gonna do like some random short well i need to be long password um oh no you oh okay sorry i did the wrong thing here i think um Sorry, I wasn't reading. <laughs> so this asks you if you're new to MintaMask. If you are not, uh, you can import a wallet from somewhere else. But let's assume we don't have any wallets that you can go here and say create a wallet. And then I said, I agree. And then you specify some password that unlocks that wallet. Uh, but these password, the, so it kind of creates accounts, uh, Ethereum accounts for you to use. Um, they don't need to be registered anywhere. It's just you, you get kind of private keys for them, um, but you can use them on any network. So you want to be careful with these passwords if you intend to use those accounts in like mainnet later. But for the test network, it actually doesn't matter too much. Uh, so we're just going to put some simple password here. And you can, you know, back up this thing so that you can move to a different browser if you would like, but uh, we don't need that for now. Yeah, and that's it. Now this is, we have this account, there's a zero ether in it, and it's all good. Uh, now here are extensions, I guess. So we can pin this MetaMask plugin here so, so we can see it up here in the corner. And that's that. So now we can close this tab and this tab and go back to our website. Um, and now when we look here, uh, the website already recognizes that I have some, uh, like I have this plugin installed. So it doesn't say install the plugin. It now say, says, please switch, <laughs> please switch to Rinkaby network. So that's just like to make sure that we are using the test network and not the mainnet. So we're not using real Ethereum, but the test network. And to switch network, if you click this plugin, uh, if you click this plugin here on the top menu, you can choose the network. So if your mainnet is just the real mainnet, like that's where the real Ethereum is being traded. Uh, but we using Rinkaby test network. So if you've done this, uh, you can see that it switched here because it recognized that, uh, that that we are on the correct network now. Now we're gonna need some Ethereum to be able to interact with the page. So 
you need to get some. Uh, if I click the account here, uh, it will copy the address. Uh, yeah. And then also one thing we can do is there's a ring cabby scan. So this is like browser of the blockchain of the Ethereum, but this is for the testnet ring cabby. And you can paste the address here and you can see that there's a zero Ethereum, which is the same thing you see here, right? So we didn't need to do that really. Uh, but it's, we can later see some transactions happening on this wallet later on. Uh, what we can s do though is to get Ethereum um, and that you do by saying for set, I think, uh, ring cabby. Let's do that. So there are some protections so that people don't get like too much of Ethereum and then just everybody, just one person or one computer probably rather would have infinite number of Ethereum. So how this protection works is that you're supposed to use some social network uh, like Twitter or Facebook and paste in some uh, tweet uh, the address that you want to have ether on and then here you, we will paste the link to the to the post so to do that uh, i'm gonna open my other browser where i have my twitter that i'm not really using to anything so here i'm just gonna do a short tweet which is the address i copied previously right so to get that i went here in the in the plugin there's this account address and I click this and it, that's how I copied it and then on my tweet here I would paste this and tweet it that's all you need to do and then you need to take a URL of this tweet which is this so with that we can come here paste this um, URL here and say give me ether there are a few options but the free ethers which is you can do that every eight hours uh, which is good enough for us uh, and then it says that you know funding request was accepted and we can see it here it takes some time before you get the money but uh, s soon we should see uh, that we got it cool so now it says funded here uh, that means we got the money and now and really if we look at the metamask now we can see that we have free ethereum and if we look here in the ether scan, you can also see that we have free Ethereum now in the network. Uh, nice, if you got here, then we're basically done. <laughs> so now we have, uh, we have the plugin, we have account, we have some Ethereum in it. And again, this is Rinkaby test network. And if I switch to mainnet, the same account has zero Ethereum on the mainnet, right? Because you can't get ethereum that easily you need to pay real money to get ethereum in mainnet but, but on rinkaby we just did that post and we got free ethereum here uh, cool so next thing you want to do is just connect uh, this plugin to this website and you just do it by clicking here the plugin will ask you if you really want to do it you say yes and connect and now the view again changed um, because now we the website have has access to their account and can see their account and see that we can actually use it to do something um, yeah and now you're choosing amount to pay but this is so this is the actual value that you're paying the 0.0001 ethereum uh, this is just the native way um, it's called way and it's the unit that you use for smart contracts which is like the lowest amount that you can transfer is one way uh, but that's like a lot of zeros and one of ethereum uh, yeah but basically the let's let's buy it for more right we can do this and that's 0 0.001 ethereum there's a logic in that blockchain smart co smart contract that says that each time you buy something the next person needs to pay more <laughs> so that's why 
there is some number here. So it defaults to the previous bind plus one. <laughs> so it's kind of stupid, but that works. And then you just click buy button and then a plugin takes over again. It says, uh, you know, you want to pay that much. Um, and gas fee is kind of interesting. So um, in the Ethereum networks, you need to pay for every transaction because you want somebody to do the transaction. So this is, this is it. And then uh, you can com confirm here. So you can see that the total is actually 0, 0 0.0 and then there is some fee in it as well which would be true for the main mainnet uh, operation as well. That's why it's maybe not feasible at this time to use that for like uh, coffee payments and similar payments because you always have some fee and sometimes the fee is like higher than what you're actually trying to pay. Um, okay, so we can confirm. Uh, and here we see another drawback of using, you know, blockchain as your main backend system uh, or database that it's kind of slow because there are all these nodes around the globe and they need to validate your transaction and those miners needs to like confirm with each other and they all need to get the same state. So it takes a little bit of time uh, for this process. As you can see, the button is not grayed out because it's like working or, or like we're waiting for a confirmation. Now we got the confirmation uh, from the network and we can see that this again changed because now we are the owner of the token. So if we look back in the ether scan as we looked before, so this is the our wallet. And now we can see some transactions here that happened. Right? So so this transaction is actually when we got funded. So that's what the faucet sent us the free ether. And this transaction is when we bought the NFT. So let's do one more transaction, which is like change the text here. We can change it to whatever. So let's change it to woof woof. And now we see the fee in action actually, but because changing the text doesn't cost anything. If you own the token, you can change it for free. But there is a fee associated with each transaction on a blockchain. So that's why we actually need to pay something to do the change. Like it's actually a really small fee, right? In this instance, but this is a variable. Like it changes based on how many people want to do transaction at the same time. And that's just because how the, how the Ethereum network works. Like there's limited of number of transactions that you can do each e and uh, like per given time period. And you basically compete with everybody else, like who's going to pay more fee uh, to be included. But let's say, yeah, let's continue. And then again, we're waiting for this to get a confirmation for this to finalize. So let's wait a little bit more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's wait a little bit more. But that's, uh, that's one of the cool things that this text is actually coming from the Ethereum network and not from like some database or like locally stored or anything. It just actually goes to the uh, Ethereum network. In Oops, uh, my, <laughs> my recording software kind of had a technical difficulty there. Um, but there's not no much more that I wanted to say or show really. So this is basically it. Um, as, as you see in the meantime, before I finished recording this part, somebody else bought the NFT and you can see that it again looks for us uh, as we are not the owner because we are not no longer the owner. Somebody else bought it. Uh, we could change the text again. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you would have any questions, you can reach out to me. You, you know, there's a email here or like there's this thingy, you can write something and that goes to my email as well. So yeah, uh, let me know how that works. Bye.